Would you like to know how to identify asymptomatic teeth at risk of catastrophic failure? If you had a consistently reliable method of identifying such teeth before they fractured, your patients would benefit, and so would your practice. Well, that's exactly what Dr. Rod Curthy is about to share with you, and he's starting right now. And now, Amazon number one best-selling author, Dr. Tom, the Jim's Guy, Orant. Today I'm speaking with Dr. Rod Curthy. Rod's 44 years of scientific research and development include laser and surgical perio bone regeneration, endosurgery, including bone regeneration, and repair of resorptive lesions, and much more. Rod's list of professional accolades is long, however, possibly Rod's favorite honor ever. Rod was selected as the most respected member of Dentaltown by over 60,000 of his peers. Dr. Rod Curthy is author of five popular clinical and dental marketing books, and most recently, he's widely known for his remarkable core whitening system. Rod, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. How are you today? I'm doing great. Ready for this uh, little talk. Awesome. Uh, in fact, uh, why don't you go ahead and take it away? It's all, it's all on you. Okay, what I'd like to talk about today is how to properly find cracked teeth, but, but even more so, how to make your patients truly understand the danger of these cracks so that they actually schedule their appointments uh, to fix those teeth before they have a huge problem. Um, so that's good for the patient, and it's really good for your practice. Now, I'd like to introduce my daughter here. This is Shannon, and um, behind her centrals, you see a transluminator light, and you see how it lights those teeth up like light bulbs. My first um, involvement in, in clinical research was back in 1976 uh, in Perio, which I, I am still to this day involved in, and uh, teeth whitening 1977, and I've been involved in all these areas of research and development since then, and um, many more. Now, I'm sure that everybody watching this sees what I'm showing you here constantly. You know, you see this crack in a tooth, but you know what? The patient has no discomfort. There's no broken area, so the patient doesn't feel it with their tongue. You say, hey, John, you know, you've got this big crack your, your tooth, we need to get it fixed. Oh, sure, doc, you know, I'll get that scheduled. But many don't get it scheduled. And then the next thing you know, their tooth is breaking or breaking in half, or, and it's a, a much bigger problem. So we need to figure out how to, how to get this point across. Uh, we all know the AAE, the American Association of Endodontists, and their publication is the Journal of Endodontics, which we call Joe, and I like to call that the horse's mouth because it's the uh, most respected um, endodontic journal in the world. So um, according to the AAE or their publication, the next few slides, these are actually quotes that I've taken from them. The first one is, um, cracked posterior teeth are commonly seen in general dental practice. But what I'd like to add to that is that cracked uh, posterior teeth um, are often not seen because oftentimes they're there and you just don't know. And it goes on to say that many patients with cracked teeth are asymptomatic. Now, 40 years ago, people didn't believe that. If you had a crack, you had symptoms. That's just not true. Another thing that the AAE tells us is that cracks harbor harmful bacteria and bacterial byproducts. So in other words, when you have a crack in a tooth, and it's not broken, it's just cracked, you do have a separation in that crack of a few microns and bacteria will get in there and the pathogenic bacteria will give off their endotoxins and exotoxins. Those toxins will go through the dental tubules, get into the pulp and really cause some damage. So um, cracks, even without the physical structure breaking, are very harmful to the health of the, of the tooth. Then they go on to say the detection of a cracked tooth is often difficult, and that's what I wanna talk about here. Normal diagnostic tests that are useful in other situations such as sensitivity testing and radiographic evaluation are not helpful for detecting a tooth with a crack. So in other words, you cannot see cracks ever 
on x-rays, on radiographs. And, you know, they say never say never, but I'm saying never here. Cracks never, ever show on a radiograph. Now, it's funny that the AAE has referred to the transluminator light as the light detector. And this is a quote, again, use the light detector as a lie detector to truly determine if a crack is present or not. Because you know how often we, we look at a tooth and we see a crack line. Well, is that a craze line? Is it a deep crack? Hey, if it's a crack, how deep is it? We, we don't know any of that by just looking at it. An x-ray certainly doesn't, doesn't tell us. So that's where the transluminator comes in. And then they say translumination is the detection met method that provides the most information and easily and graphically represents whether a crack is present. And I'm telling you, it also gives you an idea of how deep it is. And then it says, many fractures are not visualized without translumination. So what it's telling you is that every dentist listening to this, if you're not using a transluminator, virtually every day, you're missing cracks because you're not God. You're, you're not Superman. You don't have x-ray vision. If you did, you wouldn't see it because they don't show on x-rays. And they go on to say when caught early enough, cracks can be treated more conservatively. Well, obviously. And that's what our patients want. That's what we want. We want to get to these things before there's a catastrophic break. And it goes on to say the more translumination is performed, the more fractures will be identified. So if you don't have a transluminator, you're missing out. And then they say, the sooner a crack is detected and treated, the better. Now, there's a law of physics that states a beam of light will continue to penetrate through a translucent or transparent substance, and of course, teeth are very, very translucent, until it meets a space after which the light beam is reflected. So when the light goes into the tooth, when it hits a fracture, when it hits a crack line, rather, it doesn't go through the, the crack line. It reflects back at you. And boy, do you see it, which you're, you're going to see coming up here. Okay, so you can see here, there's a transluminator up against this uh, central incisor. And uh, there's no cracks in there. So it just is a very, very even light. Now, here's a third, an impacted third molar that I removed. And I cleaned up the tooth. And then I took a picture uh, with the transluminator light um, using the video cam. And uh, I'm going to use my little laser pointer here. So you can see right here where the transluminator is up against the tooth. It's very, very bright. And then it gradually, going to the other side of the tooth over here, some of the light diminishes, but still it's very bright on this side of the tooth here. And there's no abrupt changes. So this is a tooth that has no cracks in it whatsoever. So how do you properly use the translumination light? This is the transluminator light up against the tooth that you're seeing here. And of course, the light's going into the tooth. Now, what you're going to see is a distal marginal ridge crack right there. And you're seeing a buccal crack right there. Now, what you see back here on the distal marginal ridge, on the other side of that crack, you see a little bit of light. But over here on the facial, this is a deep crack. It's a deeper crack. And that means that virtually no light is getting through up here. So why am I seeing a little bit of light here? Well, it's a deep crack. It's not as deep. So certainly where the crack is, no light is getting through, but apical to where the crack stops, the light is getting through underneath and coming up so you see a little bit. So the bottom line is the more light reduction you have, the deeper the crack is. Now this is the same tooth, same situation, you're just looking at it from the occlusal aspect. And again, you see your crack here on the distal marginal ridge and on the buckle, and again, you're seeing that over here, you're getting a little bit of light. So it's certainly a deep crack, but look over here. Uh, you're just not getting any light coming through. So that's a very dangerous crack. Now, same tooth, only you're on the lingual now, and the same thing. You have the distal marginal crack, the lingual crack. So what's interesting here, the worst crack is on the lingual, 
and on the buckle. So that means the crack is going straight across. So this tooth is about ready to break in, uh, in half. It might even be too late to even save this tooth. Now this is an interesting um, situation here. You again see the transluminator light up against the tooth and you see where the crack is right there. And you see there's an amalgam, but there's something else you should be seeing. And it's right there. This area here, what is that? That's caries, that's tooth decay. And uh, I just want to point out that with translumination, oh my goodness, you see caries very, very well. Now, one of the problems that we always have with um, seeing caries on x-rays is that we never know how accurate that is. All it shows us is that there's caries in there. Oftentimes we get in there and it's 10 times larger than we would have thought. The nice thing about translumination is what you see is what you get. There's so, so there's no um, falsity there. Now take a look at this tooth. It looks good, but you put the transluminator up against it and look at this. You've got this crack and that crack and this cusp right here, that baby is about ready to break off. And same thing here, you see where the crack is. Now here, this is an old amalgam, but hey, it's looking pretty good, don't you think? Well, you put the transluminator light on there, and you see the crack? Well, that cusp is about ready to break off. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to get to that tooth before it breaks while you can still conserve more tooth structure in there for, for the base structure underneath the crown? Or here, this is during an excavation. And look what happens when you put the transluminator light up there. Boy, you can see so much better. Now, once you have um, gotten rid of all the tooth decay, what do you do? Well, if you determine that a, a bonded restoration is going to be good enough to hold the tooth together, don't forget about this crack here that you're seeing. Because remember, if you leave the crack there, you're leaving bacteria in that crack and it's going to cause a problem. It's going to come back to haunt you, to haunt the patient, actually. So according to the uh, American Academy of Endodontists, you've got to get rid of that crack. You've got to chase that crack down until all the crack is gone so the bacteria are gone. Now, here is an improper use of the transluminator light. What you're going to notice is that the transluminator is up against the tooth. But look at all around here. You're seeing the tongue. You're seeing the gingiva. You shouldn't be seeing any of that. Why are you seeing all that? Well, it's because the light in the operatory and the unit light, they're on. You've got to turn all the lights off so that the only light is the transluminator. This is what it should look like. No, the only light, there's no ambient light other than the transluminator. So let's talk about these cracks. Now, here's a typical crack, an oblique crack. Wouldn't it be great to catch it at this point. Because if you went in here, you'd remove the amalgam, you would chase this crack, but you still have tooth structure left here. But if this crack continues, you're gonna lose this entire area right here. You're going to have to do a buildup, which is okay, but it's not gonna be as sturdy, as stable as natural tooth structure. But look at this crack. Well, that's a more dangerous crack because first of all, look how close it is to the pulp here. You may have a problem. But if you caught it at this point in time, you go in there and you fix it, do a root canal if you have to, and then place your crown. But what happens when it gets deep like that and this whole piece comes off? Now, to save the tooth, you have got to do a crown lengthening. You have to, to grind away the crest of the bone here, and you've got to remove some of the gum, stitch it back. So you've got to lower everything and then fix the tooth. Well, you don't want to do that. So that's one of the reasons you want to catch these things early. Well, now here you have the mid-tooth fracture. This is the worst of all, because this is the one that if you don't catch it in time, it's going to go down, the tooth is going to break into two halves, and you're going to be surgically removing both of those halves of the tooth structure. And then, of course, you have to replace it with an implant or a bridge. Patient doesn't want that. You don't want that for your patients. So now this is very interesting. The laws of physics, and I'm sure you know this, dictate that cracks will follow the path of least resistance. So that means 
that the cracks are almost always going to be in grooves of the teeth and at the margins of restorations. That means they're going to be hiding from your view. You won't see them. You certainly can't see them on radiographs. So how are you going to know they're there? You're not going to know that they're there. Now, this is not my case right here, but take a look at this tooth. And take a look at this little line here and this little line there. What is that? I don't know. Is that a craze line? Is it a crack? Is it a problem? There's no restoration in the tooth, so the tooth is not weakened from having a filling or something in there. Well, in all truth, it's a crack right across. Now take a look at the x-ray and look at all the infection, all this dark area around the tooth. This tooth was broken in half. You can see the line that goes there. And this is really what it looked like when the tooth was removed. If the dentist that extracted this tooth, if the dentist the patient was going to, if indeed the patient was going to a dentist, had a transluminator, he or she could have caught this or would have caught it in the very beginning when the crack first started, when they could have simply put in a bonded composite restoration. Or if it was a little deeper, they could have put an onlay or a crown on it. And so for those of you who think that teeth only crack or break when they're weakened by having a restoration of some sort in them, think again. Here's another example. You don't see any filling in here. You, and look at how deep that perioprobe goes in. Now, look at the tooth that's been extracted, and you see where the crack line is here. And you see all the infection, etc. Well, again, if this patient had been seeing a dentist who, who routinely used translumination during the examinations, this dentist would have picked up this problem. Now, do you see the stain in here and you see all the infection? This wasn't a one-time uh, traumatic situation where the tooth was fine, they bit on something and boom, there was a crack. No, this happened over a period of time. So this could have been caught before this happened and the, 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 the tooth could have been fixed very easily. So without translumination, how will you know there's a crack that has started until it's too late? The answer is you won't. Now, most dentists um, routinely miss crack teeth. The vast majority of dentists who don't already use translumination that are watching this, every day, every single day, multiple times a day, you are missing things that you should be catching for your patients. Now, if you're missing cracks, as I just said, you're not doing right by your patients, but don't forget, a dental practice, a law practice, a medical practice, we're also businesses. Now, we like to think of ourselves as being above that because we like to think of ourselves as, as, as really ha having a lot of concern for our patients. But the bottom line, is, bottom line is, we're a business. Luckily, we dentists, you know, we get to get paid for, for helping people, for fixing things. But we need money coming in to pay our rent, to pay our employees, to pay overhead, to pay our own mortgages, you know, et cetera. So by missing cracks, you're also hurting your dental business, your bottom line. So when you are using a transluminator, you can catch these cracks earlier, which means you can treat the tooth more conservatively if you catch it early with just bonded fillings, bonded composites. If it gets a little deeper, you can use partial coverage on lays. And if it gets deeper than that, you're going to be looking at crowns. And if it's deeper than that, or depending upon where the crack is, you're looking at endodontic treatment and full coverage. And if it gets worse than that, you're going to be removing that tooth, sometimes very surgically if it, if it breaks into pieces. And now you're going to have to replace it with a bridge or an implant. Um, that's great that we can do those things for our patients, but, but the patients don't want us to let it get that far. So again, I've said cracks are difficult to see clinically. Cracks do not show on radiographs. Um, and how do you know the difference between a crack or a craze line? And if it is a crack, uh, how do you know how deep it is? Well, that's where the transluminator comes in. So diagnosing these cracks is a win-win. The patient benefits tremendously and the dental practice benefits. And again, isn't it wonderful that we are in a profession where we actually get paid for helping our patients? So what kind of transluminator should you use? Some people will try and use a curing light. Don't do that. Curing lights 
are way too intense. They will just blast light totally through the tooth, and, and, and you won't be able to diagnose well from them at all. Now, I have seen some companies have a little attachments that you can put onto their curing lights to use as transluminators. Believe me, they don't work. I've tried them. Um, they, I don't want to say they're worthless, but they're, they're, they, they don't work well. Uh, some dentists will use their fiber optic handpiece. That doesn't work well at all because you can't get the light up, truly up against the tooth and you can't isolate it to one particular place. Or these silly little things, these bulb-tipped uh, transluminators. You can see this little light bulb here on the end. And when you turn them on, you can see the light's going in all directions. You don't want that. So if this yellow area here is a tooth and you put your transluminator up against that, you turn it on, sure, light is going into the tooth like this, but light is also going outside of the tooth. And so it's the, that excess light is getting onto the rest of the tooth, getting into that tooth structure, and it's obscuring what you see. Also, it's just not the right wavelength and right intensity to penetrate the tooth well. So what you need is an honest-to-goodness LED fiber optic tip transluminator. Now, these are the two that I use. And, and let me stop right here and say that uh, I'm, I'm going to be talking about these two. I'm going to be talking about something else a little bit later on, different brands. I have nothing to do with these, these companies. I don't know the people at these companies. Nothing, I'm talking about their products because these two, because I've used them for years. They work great. I get nothing out of it. Let me show you this one here, this top one. Hey, Rod. Yes. You mentioned that there are all these other kind of uh, less expensive imitations of the translumination lights. Um, a, number of, a number of my members told me that they were using something called a rifle bore illumination light, which was a fraction of the cost. Not that these are very expensive, but the rifle bore illumination was, was way less. And so I asked them to use a transluminator and a rifle bore and to kind of do an A-B split test. And so they took a transluminator, one that you're showing on the screen there, and they, uh, they, they did an A-B split test between, on the same teeth in the same patient using the rifle bore light and these, and it was hands down, you couldn't see anything near with the cheap imitations. Dentists should not be trying to save a few dollars with a cheaper light, they should be buying one of the ones that we know works. The top one is the Kinetic Instruments um, transluminator. It's a four millimeter tip. And that is my workhorse. And, and, and what I'd like to first say, these things are so inexpensive, which I'll go over. They're absolutely just, I, I had always, I've always had multiple ones in each operatory. So um, anyway, the second one, the, the bottom one, the Microlux, uh, it can come with a two millimeter or three millimeter tip, and I will go more into detail on those. But anyway, when you put the transluminator up against the tooth like this, remember it has the proper um, uh, light intensity and the proper wavelength to penetrate tooth structure perfectly. And also, it is isolated only in the tooth structure. You don't have any, any light going outside of the tooth structure. So here you see that the Kinetic Instruments has a larger tip on that. And now you see that the Kinetic Instruments one here, I'll show you with the, the laser pointer, has a much larger area of light. Now they, they both work well, but for my, my go-to, for my workhorse, I like more light like that because I just see more. And here you can see the same thing. So let's talk about both of these. Um, the Kinetic Instruments, like I said, has the larger tip four millimeters, which I like. It has the higher intensity only because it's got a, a larger tip, so it, it gets more light into the tooth. So I feel I get better penetration and better visualization. Um, it's got a wonderful rechargeable battery. Now, the Microlux Translunarator comes with a three millimeter, or you can get it with a two millimeter tip. And I got mine with the two millimeter tip, and I'll tell you the reason I like this so much and I, I have it on hand always, is every once in a while there will be a tight space, interproximal or whatever, 
to try and get my transluminator in, that's when I reach for that two millimeter tip Microlux. Uh, it has less intensity, but it's still very adequate. And the bottom line is, if, if you like the idea of having the smaller tip, heck, you could you could have the Microlux um, as your only transluminator and use the three millimeter or the two millimeter, depending upon what you want at any given time. Uh, it uses uh, two AAA batteries; they're not rechargeable. Uh, now the accessories. Now again, if you were to get this with a three millimeter, you can you can buy the two millimeter tip separately. Uh, like I say, I, I bought mine originally just with the two millimeter tip but it's got a very cool proximal uh, carries uh, attachment that is um, um, three-fourths of a millimeter in diameter now here's what it looks like this thing is pretty cool what you do is you insert it between two posterior teeth now sure sometimes there's not a, enough space there to get it in and you can't use it but Oftentimes, in fact, maybe most of the time, you've got plenty of room to slide that in. And so let's take a look at this tooth here. Th this, we're going to concentrate on this tooth that I'm, I'm pointing out right now. Now, here is when you get the light underneath there. And look it. This is the area of caries. Now, again, this, what you see is what you get. That's exactly the size of the caries. And if you saw that on a radiograph, Eh, you wouldn't really know for sure. Or if it was a smaller area, which I'm going to show you, you w might not see it at all on a radiograph. So that's where the area we're talking about. So now, then there's also an endolite attachment, which is one millimeter diameter. You actually insert that into your endo access. I, I don't use that. Um, I really like putting the fiber optic up against the lingual and or the facial surfaces. That lights up the whole inside of the tooth. And I can find, um, difficult to find pulp canals very, very easily with that. It has a perio probe attachment, which you slide underneath the gums and it shines light through. And that's more for showing your patients. I've never used that. Uh, it has a lighted mirror attachment. I don't use that. It's got an oral cancer screening light. I've never used that. I can't vouch for that. Transluminators find cracks, like we've talked about. And not only will they show you areas of caries in teeth, but in general, it will show you very well how well existing restorations are doing. Because when you look with your eye, oftentimes you can't tell. And oftentimes when, when you take radiographs, you can't really tell for sure if there is any recurrent decay um, around a restoration. But when you use the transluminator, oh my goodness, you can't believe how much stuff you see. At least for, for a couple decades, I have used transluminators during my exams on every exam. I go around from the facial, from the lingual. It doesn't take me any more time. And you cannot believe not just cracks, but all the other stuff I find. And that's our job. Our job is to find stuff. That means we're finding things earlier. That's great for our patients. That means we're finding things we wouldn't have otherwise found. That's great for our business because we now are going to fix those. It finds us in our proximal caries, like I mentioned, obliterated endodontic um, uh, canals, and occlusal caries. Now, this is what I love. If you're like me, you have patients that have uh, virgin posterior teeth, and using your Sharp Explorer, you are checking the grooves and pits, and you feel a little tiny stick, but you know, you're not convinced. So you don't do anything. You put a note to watch it. And maybe a few years go by, and every time there's a little tiny stick, but you're not convinced. And then one time, it's sticky enough that you're saying, yeah, I better get in there. And on the x-ray, on the radiograph, it's looking fine. But you get in there, and it's like getting into the Grand Canyon. And if it's a younger patient, sometimes even a pulp exposure. I'm sure stuff like that has happened to you. Well, this is the nice thing about translumination, because remember I said, what you see is what you get. So take a look here. If there was decay, if there was caries in the pit, this is basically what it would look like. So this is one of my favorite uses. Now here you see anterior teeth with the transluminator behind the teeth. And just take a look here. Now, Here's the, the softest area, but you really are out here. That's where the extent of all the caries is. Now, remember I said what you see is what you get? Take a look. 
That's exactly what you saw with the transilluminator. Isn't that cool? And if you were if you were judging this uh, preoperatively based on a radiograph, <laughs> it wouldn't be nearly as accurate. Same thing here. Now here's what I like to see. You know how we know that decay burrows a little hole through the enamel and then it spreads out what we call mushrooming in the dentin? Look at that. And then you see the area right there also. Oftentimes you won't even see that on a radiograph. So here's the ordering information for the kinetic instruments. The, the thing is only $249. Now this is the one for the Microlux. It's $10 more. It's $259. And again, you can order it with the 2 millimeter or the 3 millimeter. Those accessories I was talking about, they run anywhere from $125 to $139 each. Hey, Rod. Uh, yes. Uh huh. I think what we'll do to make it real easy for the viewer is I'll put those as hyperlinks, uh, all that information, I'll put that in the description right below the video. So if you're interested in purchasing either of those, uh, take a look at the description right below. Okay, that sounds great, Tom. Thank you. One of the things I'd like everyone to notice is, <laughs> you know, nowadays we're, we talk about lasers and CEREC and all this technology that costs a tremendous amount of money. I'm telling you, for me, if I had to give up any piece of expensive technology or my transluminators, I had to make that choice, I'm telling you, I'm not giving up my transluminators. So the benefit to our patients, the benefit to our practices for such an inexpensive piece of equipment, it's just it's simply a no-brainer. And as I mentioned before, I use a transluminator on every exam, period. Now, just because we find a problem that doesn't mean that when we explain it to our patients that they're thoroughly understanding it. Oh, they might be understanding it, but they not, might not be emotionally understanding it. They might not understand how important it is. So they therefore might say, oh, sure, I'll make an appointment, but then they never do. That's not good for our practice, but it's really, really not good for the patient. So, okay, so th let's say this is a tooth that you took a picture of with your intraoral video cam, and you see on the distal, a little crack or craze line. You don't know for sure how deep it is. It's this right here. Okay, so now when I went and put the transluminator up against that, this is what I saw. That's not just a craze line. That's a crack. It's not a catastrophic crack that's going to cause us to lose a tooth. But hey, that's a crack that you've got to get to now before it becomes a catastrophic crack. And that's what I'm talking about right there. What if it was a deeper crack? Well, this is what it might look like right there. Now, you see you have a crack line here, and I've shown one there. I've done that because you should be prepared that whenever you have a really, really major crack, it, the tooth structure has weakened so much, usually you'll see at least two cracks like this. Now, you're seeing this, and you understand what's going on, but how can you show this to your patient? Do you have an intraoral video cam? Think back. When you see a picture of a problem with a tooth, you're a dentist. You see these things all the time. It doesn't freak you out. But when you show a patient a problem with their own tooth, wow, they, they can sometimes really freak out. That lets them know what the problem is, and that is very motivating so that they schedule an appointment and, and have it done, which is, is the, the best thing for the patient. So patients get alarmed more than we do. And what I love, if you've ever heard me talk before, you've heard me say, seeing is believing, a picture is worth a thousand words, perception is reality. Those statements are so true. I live by those. What you need to do, if you don't have a video cam already, you need to find one where you can turn the light on and off. You know how a camera, like even the cameras on our iPhones, you can turn the flash on, you can turn the flash off. You need to be able to do the same thing with your video cam because you want to take a picture with the light on to orient the patient of what the tooth looks like, show them where the crack is in general, but then you need to have all lights off except for the transluminator and get a picture of that. So now, if you don't have a transluminator and you want to get one and you just want to get the cheapest thing on the market to give it a try. Well, you can go to any of these websites here um, and look up uh, um, dental intraoral um, video cam. 
Uh, but I will tell you that it will be almost impossible for you to find one where the light can be turned on and off. Certainly on all of these, you can contact the seller and ask them. But if this is if that's the kind if this is the type of light you have, or you have one that already where you can't turn the light off, this is the type that you need. Notice here, the LED lights are recessed. The lens is recessed, and you have this flat, opaque area of plastic, and you do not have a clear plastic covering over this. Well, if that's the case, what you can do, you can take a piece of black electrical tape and a paper punch. You can punch a hole in it like that, and then you put it over your intraoral video cam, exposing, you know, covering the lights, exposing the lens, and then fold over the edges and use that. That might work for you. But, oh, and, and here, you can see that you can buy hole punches that are 1 16th inch diameter, 1 8th inch, or the standard is 1 quarter of an inch. Now, if you have a light like this, notice right here that you have this plastic covering over here. This isn't going to really work. If you try and cover this with the black electrical tape, you might cover it, but the light is going to escape out the sides a little bit, and that's going to obscure what you're going to see. Same thing here. You know, with this plastic covering, you need to have one without a plastic covering. But the best thing, so this is the type that you need to get. The best thing to do is to actually get an intraoral video cam. You're going to need to spend a little bit more money, but not much. Now, um, you're going to need to get one that can be turned on and off. Now, notice where I have circled. It says lights on, off. Hold for two seconds. So you can turn the light on and off on this. Now, I've never used this. Uh, I just went through, you know, I called a bunch of companies and I, and I found this one. I only called a few companies, so I'm sure there are other ones out there that sell professional uh, grade um, uh, intraoral video cams. So call around or you can give these people a try. This is what the head looks like. Now, what I like about this from what I saw on the internet, you can hook this uh, in, you know, it's a USB 2.0 or 3.0. You can hook it into your laptop and download the photographs. It works with all these softwares, and it's got a drop-down menu showing three times this many softwares that it works with. Here's what I, another thing I like about it. Free technical support for life, free software upgrades for life, and a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you have nothing to lose. Like I say, I know nothing about this light. I've never used it, never held it in my hand. I know nothing about the company. Get it, try it, use it the way we're talking about. If it doesn't work, hey, you can send it back. And this is the ordering information there. It's only 995 bucks. I mean, really, what do you have to lose? You can get one. And if everything, when you find how this works, you're going to want one um, in every operatory. And I'm sure Tom will put a link along with the other ones. How do you do this? First thing you do is you take your intraoral video cam and you take a picture with the light on so that you're going to be able to orient the patient. Then what you do is you turn all the lights off in the room and you're going to use the camera. And you're going to put your transluminator light up against the tooth and you're going to get something like this. Then what you can do is you can show the patient both pictures and you can show them how deep the crack is. Now here's something else I do. I hold the transluminator up with all the lights off in the operatory up against my thumb and show the patients how the light goes through my thumb and they always go, wow, look at that. And I explain to them that a tooth is much more translucent than my thumb is. So I explain to them that it lights the tooth up like a light bulb. I explain that the, the light will not go through a crack. I go through the whole bit. So I show them this and I explain to them what's going to happen. The problem is that many times, even seeing that, they won't book an appointment because they just don't comprehend what's going to happen. So let me now tell you the story of Lynn. Lynn is president of a big corporation close to my practice. She presented with a DO amalgam on a first upper premolar and a bona fide crack, which I showed her like I just showed you, you know, with the transluminator, that crack on the mesial. And I told her, Lynn, we got to get to this before this tooth breaks. Sure, Dr. Kurthy, we're going to do that. Well, she had all good intentions, but she's a busy gal. 
four recalls went by every time I showed her and she never booked an appointment. So one day I get this phone call from Lynn and she's on a cruise ship in the Caribbean and she's just finished eating something and that tooth snapped and she is in pain. So I arranged to get her in as quickly as possible. Um, as soon as she came in, I mean the same, same day we got her in, I don't know about you, but when I know I'm going to be doing a crown or anything major on a tooth like that, I just knock down the occlusal like you see there, first thing, get that out of my way. And then I excavated, I did a gross excavation. You can see right over here how there's some red in there. Well, that's Carrie's indicator because it has a low surface tension and it soaks into cracks. Uh, I can use my transluminator, but I wanted to visualize it this way also. You will notice that the crack is there. Now, the original crack was from here to about here, underneath the filling. When Lynn bit down, it cracked the rest of the way. So we've got two separate pieces here. This tooth is broken in half. And you can see over here, you've got a, a old pulp exposure. And of course, you still have, have caries over here. I don't know why I took this photograph, but I did. We went ahead and extracted the tooth. Anyway, later that day, a patient by the name of David and Dave had been a patient of mine for a long time, really nice guy, very laid back guy. And he was in that day for a recall. And this was going to be the third time that I had shown him, that I was going to be showing him virtually the same thing. So I did. And then I thought about Lynn. And so I yelled out to my assistant, hey, Nellie, you know that picture we took of Lynn uh, earlier today? Uh, would you print that out and bring it to me? So Nellie did. And I explained the story about Lynn to Dave. Well, what I'm going to tell you now, this is the only time this has ever happened to me. And I don't, I'm not sure why Dave did this. But that Dave said, um, first of all, he looked like he was going to pass out when I showed him this picture. He said, Dr. Kurthy, do you mind if I get up for a minute? And I thought he needed to have a restroom break. I thought maybe the shock of seeing the photo was too much for him. You know what he did? He went up to my front desk and he made the appointment to come in and treat that tooth. And then he came back and sat down. No idea why he did it that way. It's never happened again. But that got me to thinking, wow, this is very powerful. So from that day forward, every time a patient would come in, whether it was a new patient, an existing patient, first time I'm pointing it out or the third time I'm pointing it out, whatever, I would always say, hey, Nellie, you know that picture we took of Lynn? Would you bring that in? And I would tell him the story about Lynn. And from then on, I'm telling you, almost everybody booked. What a wonderful thing for the patients to really understand what's going to happen if they don't get this thing fixed. Oh, by the way, another thing I always tell the patient, be sure to chew anything crunchy or hard on the other side of your mouth until you get in here. Because I've had patients where we've booked them for treatment and between the time they book the appointment and the time they get in, the tooth ends up breaking. This is a wonderful thing. I would like for everyone here, if, if you would like to, uh, you can contact my company, you know, Core Whitening. Here's telephone numbers and an email. You'll get faster response um, by calling in. And just when the rep answers the phone, tell them you watch this and just ask them to, to email you Lynn's Cracked Tooth Photo. And then you can print it out and you can do the same thing. You can even tell them the story. It's wonderful. This is the icing on the cake because it's when they see this picture, that's when they move. All of this, the transluminator light, the video cam, the picture of Lynn, uh, any other cracked tooth photos that you might already have, what's the effect on the patients? Well, even though they don't have any symptoms right now, they now fully, and I mean fully, understand the problem and what's going to happen sooner or later to that tooth if they don't do something. They're going to understand that the longer they leave it, the worse it's going to get. And what's going to happen at some point in ta time is it's going to break. It could fracture the tooth right down the middle, uh, which certainly causes intense pain and the need to get in there and surgically extract and have a bridge or an implant. Or Patients don't want that. So once they fully understand this, believe me, they're going to book. Now let's talk about insurance, something you really need to understand. Most insurance companies cover only disease not structural damage. And cracks are structural damage. They're not disease. But that's okay. Because every time that I can remember where I've gone 
and treated someone with a chronic crack, not a crack that happened because they got hit in the face, you know, in an automobile accident, but I'm talking about a chronic crack, you're going to find carries in there virtually every time. Inform the pay, the insurance company um, if there's carries, which like I said, there almost always is. And so when carries, which is disease, is present, as I understand, they must provide benefits to restore the tooth in some manner. And also, insurance companies may not legally insist you practice outside or below the legal standard of care. <laughs> that doesn't mean they won't try, but they're legally not, not allowed to do that. So here's the problem. Insurance companies, they can't see fractures or, or cracks, rather, on radiographs. So you need a narrative, and if you can print out the picture that you took with the transluminator showing that crack, Oh, you want, to, you want to include that also. Now, the recognized methods to confirm bona fide CTS, which is cracked tooth syndrome, are the use of a transluminator, number one, a tooth sleuth crack detector, which is a bite test, which I'll show you in a second, and a cold test. Those are the three. The most important of, uh, uh, one is the translumination. This is a tooth sleuth. It's just a little thing that you buy where the, you, you have the patient bite in certain areas on the tooth to see if you can reproduce any sensitivity. But remember, many or most of these patients don't have any symptoms, so, so you're not going to get any symptoms with that either. And here's just one narrative. This is one example because they're all going to be different. But this is one narrative I would use. A tooth 13 with caries, or you can say recurrent caries or caries within the crack, deep mesiodistal vertical crack, and CTS, crack tooth syndrome, confirmed with tooth sleuth, crack detector, translumination, and cold uh, pulp test. So you've told them now that you've used all three of the diagnostic tests that are recognized. And then you point out that the current standard of care, which is a legal thing, contraindicates placement of fillings in teeth with CTS, and it dictates occlusal coverage via crowns or onlays. And then because of the fact that, like the AAE, tells us we can't leave the crack in there, you have to, you have to chase that crack until it's gone, um, then the then you can say standard of care also dictates excavation of the vertical crack requiring bonded core buildup after full excavation of the crack. Well, now, sometimes, you know, the, the examiner there at the insurance company might not know what the heck they're talking about. And they might say, well, yeah, how do I know that that's true? Well, here's, here's just a, a small sampling of the literature citations that go over what I've just discussed. And um, you can include any of these as reference or all of these. You can come back and, and write these down and send those along with, you know, with your narrative. So, again, insurance companies, they may not legally tell you. They might illegally tell you, but they're not legally able to tell you to restore a tooth with simply a filling because you have provided them with the proof that there's a genuine crack and you've informed them and proved the legal standard of care dictates cuspal coverage, a crown or an onlay. Hey, Rod. Yes. I love the narrative and I also love the citations. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of, the, all of that below. Uh, so if you look in the description below the uh, video, you'll find those citations as well as the narrative. Oh, that's fantastic, Tom. Thanks. Now, uh, I've given this lecture, oh, probably six or seven times before, only when, I, when I'm asked to, to give it. And um, uh, I get so much feedback. I mean, I've had dentists, well, the feedback has been amazing. But this one here is probably the most amazing that I've gotten. And this is from a dentist that was at one of Dr. Orant's gatherings in Boston. And this was back in 2015. And at this point in time, I believe he'd been doing this for about three months. And he said, I had the opportunity to listen to you speak at Dr. Orant's GG12 program in Boston and share a nice cigar with you. And yes, I enjoy cigars. Um, I feel the need to thank you for your passion in dentistry. I cannot believe how much easier it is to do show and tell. And of course, he's talking about the story of Lynn. Um, after telling a story about someone else's cracked tooth and of course showing them that photograph, 
the number of patients who have not scheduled has been only five. So in other words, the rest of them have scheduled. And he said, I have added to date $50,000 a month from your lecture. That's a wonderful thing for his business, but think of the benefit to all those patients. So all those patients who would not have otherwise scheduled and would have gone on to much bigger problems have now been helped. I love this email. He doesn't know I'm doing this, so I blocked out his name, but I've gotten so much feedback. It's been wonderful. So now the question is, what are you going to do? Are you just going to be listening to this thinking, hey, that's pretty cool, and then never do anything about it? Well, if you, if you don't, then your practice is never, if that's the way you operate, your practice is never going to get better. But if, if looking at this, if you believe that this even might help your practice, give it a try. You have nothing to lose. This stuff is so cheap. And the, the, the benefit to you and the practice, the potential there is just huge. Thank you, uh, Tom, for inviting me to do this. And certainly anybody who wants to contact me is welcome to do so. Rod, uh, I've, I've, heard, I've heard this lecture a whole bunch of times by you, which is why I asked you to do it today. And so many of our GEMS family members have said it's been practice changing and life changing, both for the patients have been able to help uh, and also, of course, for the financial benefit of the practice. So uh, thank you for sharing. Uh, it gets better every time I hear it. It's just wonderful information. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, Tom. I, it was fun doing it. All right. Take care. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. If you found this video helpful, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so you won't miss a thing. If you're not yet a GEMS family member, Elizabeth and I would be delighted to help you build your practice and your revenue. We'd love to have you here with us on Planet GEMS. For a time-limited offer, a free test drive of GEMS family membership, go to dentalgoldmine.com. There's a link in the description below. If this was helpful, please click like, and I'd truly appreciate if you could share this with other dentists. Thanks so much for joining Dr. Kurthy and me here in the Dental Goldmine, and remember, you're only one gem away.